welcome back to another video. So today I've got some blotchy rhinos and I'm also going to be doing some patch lining. So if you haven't already, please leave a like, please leave a comment. And if you haven't already, please, please subscribe. It would really help me out. And if you could click that little bell icon as well, that would also help me out. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and make sure to hit the like button. Okay, so here we go. Block your rhinos. So first thing I'm going to do is fill the sink up. This one's got a handy little cap on the bottom of the trap, so I like to just take those off to fill the bucket up. So we're just going to pour some water in the rhinos, and yeah, they're blocked. I don't know why I doubted them, but yeah, they're definitely blocked. So I found this handy little access cap here. So what I'm hoping to do is take this cap off, which was full up. So not ideal. That's where we want to try and get our machine into. That's where the pipe drops straight down through the floor. So what we're going to have to do is get the wet back out and suck the water out of the bodywork. Okay, so we've got our wet vac, so what we're going to do is put the pipe straight onto the outlet on the rhino and hopefully that will draw all the water through and then we'll be able to get that cap off to get the machine in. So that seems to have done the trick, so let's get the cap off and then get the machine in there. Right, so blockage is clear. All we got to do now is get rid of all that horrible lime scale. Right, so let's get another bucket of water down these rhinos and see if we've cleared it. Now we just got to put the cap back on. Unplug the wet vac. And see what we got inside.
Right, so that's me done for today. So we're now going to move on to the next day and we're going to go and do some patch lining. Right, so here we are at the site. I'm just going to run the camera through just to remind myself of what's going on here. I have previously surveyed this, but it's always good to have a fresh look at it. Right, so as we run the camera through, you can see straight away at the start, there's a nice crack there. Then we've got another crack here. Bit of a dodgy joint here. And some bubbles and another crack on that joint. Then we come to a bit that looks like it's been previously lined. It's a bit of a rough liner, but I don't really know what was there before, so I can't judge it too much. Then we've got a nice hole in the top of the pipe and another crack down the right hand side. Then we've got some more cracks and a little bit of root coming in before then carrying on down to where this junction is coming in, a nice little plastic piece and a liner. Once again, we've got another crack and then carrying on down one more crack before it then turns left and then heads into the downstream manhole. So it's not too bad, but we're going to give it a little clean through anyway. It doesn't harm to before putting any patches in. So the jet I'm using is a spinner. I'm going to run it through there about 2000 PSI. Now, this is one of my favourite jets just because of the sound it makes. Now, we must have cleared some dirt out of the pipe because you can tell by the colour of the water that's coming back. Okay, so we'll just run the camera through again, just check we haven't missed anything, but it should look a lot cleaner now, fingers crossed. Right, so I've pushed the camera down to the first defect, so what I'm going to do is put a little tape mark on the camera rail before I pull it out, and then when I line it up with the rods and the packer, I'll be able to mark it at that point, and I know where I'm patching them. It's just a nice easy way to do it. Right, so what I'm doing now is I'm just putting a plastic sleeve over the packer, this just protects it from any resin going on there, and also makes the patch easier to get off.
Right, so next job to do is get our fiberglass out and mix up the resin and then we're going to cover the fiberglass, fold it all up and then wrap it round the packer. Now, the main thing to remember when you do this is always start shiny side up and you need to make sure you cover all of it. Then you fold the two ends into the centre before then flipping it over and then completely covering the other side. So that's our patch completely covered in resin, so now what we're going to do is we're going to get the packer and we're going to roll it on nice and tight and then we'll then put some wire on it that's going to hold that patch on the packer whilst we push it down the pipe. This one doesn't have to go too far so it's not too bad really. The other tip if you're doing this is wear two pairs of gloves, it just means you can take the top pair off and then touch anything you have to without getting resin on everything. So now what we're going to do is push the patch down to where the defect is. Now this one doesn't have to go too far, I didn't even end up having to put a set of rods on. So we should just be able to push it down to the knuckle and that should be about right. Then we're going to get our compressor and we're going to pump it up to 2 bar. That's going to inflate the packer and push it nice and tight to the outside of the pipe so the resin will go off. Okay, so it's been two hours, so the resin should be nice and hard, so what we're going to do now is get the air back out, pull the packer out, and then we're going to stick the camera in and see what it looks like. And there you have it, the first of seven patches. This one's come out lovely. I've got an awful lot more to do. Okay, so this is the finished line in. Now there's a couple of extra liners I would have liked to have done, but this is all the client wanted to pay for. But I'm sure you'll agree, it looks an awful lot better. So if you're still watching at the end of the video, please leave a like, please leave a comment, and if you haven't already, please subscribe. Thank you for watching.
please like and subscribe and leave a comment.